Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast that reviews the movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 281, and it is your review of Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. As always, it, it, um, it's the Nerd here to host the show. I'm my wonderful co host, Brad Young Yoda. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Monday evening. This is the second recording we are doing today. Yep. Uh, if you missed us on the streaming, which you did, and I know you did because we had no one watching us, um, we have the, the fifth element going to be coming out. So catch that. And uh, yeah, we are here to talk about uh, Charlton, Charlton Heston's tan. Yep. Charlton Heston's tan. Uh, and of course, this is early before anybody else gets to watch it with an ad on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Time. So, as always, that's available on patreon.com slash denerdcore. At the $1 tier, you get this episode early and ad-free before anybody else gets to watch it uh, this week on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Because uh, we're, we had to do two episodes. So, if you didn't watch the last one, basically... Uh, Houston got hit with basically the equivalent of a category two hurricane for like about an hour ish. Like, for, well, at least that's how long it lasted me for me, like an hour to two hours. But what's it called? It was a pretty much a freaking category two hurricane and it did a lot of damage and it blew out my freaking what's it called? Uh, my, my, um, my, my power and we couldn't do any of this shit. So, yeah, you, you know, know in, in Arizona, we call that a microburst. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe not quite to that extent, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, uh, Brad. Uh, today we're um, we're what's it called? Uh, doing Touch of Evil, and I'm very excited. This is one of those movies that I picked for this month that I wanted to revisit uh, because I remember seeing this movie back in the day in uh, my history of film noir class. In, no, in not, not only that role, but you gave it a terrible, terrible score. Yeah, I penned. I I penned this shit, man. You gave it, did you say anything about it, or did you? Nope. Were you just like? I actually <laughs> forgot to log this one, Brad. I only had it rated. It only had it rated. I didn't log it. So now so, we don't even know what was going through your mind when. I don't remember, Brad. <laughs> I do not remember. I actually don't even like. What was the what was this the is, best? This is word this I is one of those I would really like to know, because if you gave this a two out of, two out of five, I don't know what to tell you. Because <laughs> even <laughs> if I'm disagreeing, I'm like, me and Raul don't always see eye to eye, but even I'm like, oh man, that's yeah. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, I was just like, I don't want to write an essay. I don't want to write an essay. Why the fuck are you going to write an essay? We're going to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who cares about but, Orson Welles? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Brad. <laughs> like, like teenage role. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, man, it's just uh, that's the case. Uh, but, Brad, uh, watching this, I kind of thought about it. Like, man. I know we don't even have anything usually uh, in November, like a specific theme, but I think, bro, like after a while, we've been watching a couple of noirs. I think that November November should be noir Vember, Brad. I think November. That sounds kind of good. Yeah. We, yeah, I kind of yeah. like that. Yeah, because. I, I wish, it did, wish it did almost take eight years for us to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, November should be no November, Brad. Uh, although we have been supplementing that with a lot of Kurosawa noirs yeah. through the years, yeah. so yeah. But I mean, like from the Lady of Sh for Lady from Shanghai, and now this one, Brad. I'm like, damn, Brad. Like, yeah, you know, damn, well, this noir shit kind of good. Well, well kind of got the noir down. Yeah, man. It's like, kind of, man, this this noir shit kind of good, Brad. Yeah, I even like the Shakespearean ones. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like in Wells month. I, th I think, um. I think we've been pretty lucky on our last few choices of just being yeah. like, ah, this, this is Chaplin's birthday. Ah, this is Orson Welles' birthday. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that we we got to go back to this one because uh, I'm really really excited for this one. Dude, I, I think I, it's a fantastic film. I, I mean, somebody needs to slap you for the two though. Like, I'm not letting I that know, go. Brad. I mean, I have you no were idea, Brad. You were I have absolute... no idea why. Like, yeah. I know I've talked shit to you before, just to talk shit. But this one, you were absolutely wrong. If you gave it a, two. I just I have no idea, Brad. Where, when, like, what it was? Like, I'm trying to remember what I watched those those years. This, this those... is this is like when I I had to go back and be like, all, all those times I said Seven Samurai was 20 minutes too long, and I had to go back the last few and go like, ah, I take all all yeah. that shit talk back. <laughs> and like I gave 
you know, I I watched okay, Double Indemnity is pretty good. Like I I I, hired, I did this one higher than I put this one higher than, than higher Double Indemnity. Laura, uh, Woman in the Window. Man, you know, I got a lot of noirs here that are a little bit higher than this, and I'm just like, wow, like a lot of these aren't even half the movies as these are, man. Like, what's going on here, man? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. Yeah, but. Yeah, uh, apparently, yeah, I gave this a two star back in the day. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, you, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. We're, we're just going to be teenage Rollo was mad. He had to write a paper about it yeah. and was like, fuck Orson Welles, and here's two stars. And yeah. Charlton Heston is not Mexican. Fuck yeah. Charlton. <laughs> yeah. He's not uh, Egyptian either, but he's been cast in those roles too. Yeah. That year I watched The Killing as well, and I gave that one a higher score than this one. Um, yeah, I don't know, Brad. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know what the fuck I was on, Brad. I don't know what the hell I was yeah. on. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, what's it's, uh, let's go. I'm glad that we were able to re, re uh, revisit it. I'm glad that I was able to revisit it because, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about now on this one. But, um, yeah, I know it's not, you know, necessary for me to ask you this, Brad, but since it is a different episode and to the people, to the viewers, it is a different day. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Raul. I'm well, I'm doing all right. Um, my lunch is not um sitting correctly well, at the moment. Tell them what you had for lunch first. So I had so I had a Topo Chico. Okay, that's not what's gonna do it to you. No, it's not gonna like I love Topo Chico. Um, and they got like these new flavors. They got like this blueberry something flavor. That's oh like, the Topo horrific. Sabores. Oh yeah, bro. I, I don't know. It's the, it's the little blue can. Yeah, the I one with it. the. The, like, aloe, the lime, grapefruit, and blueberry yeah, one. Like, lime, and then like the it's not grapefruit. It's um the clementine, like clementine, I think, or something orange. Oh orange no, one. you're never mind. I'm talking about the bottle ones, not the uh the, no, the can. No, no, no. Oh, no, those no, can no. ones, bro. I'm not a big fan of those can ones. I like the blueberry one. Like the the other ones, I don't know. Um, but yeah, usually I just like the lime. You know, the lime Topo Chico in the bottle. That's the one I usually like, or just the regular Topo Chico, or the alcoholic Topo Chicos. I mean, I can go for those too. But I had that, um, and then I had a jalapeno Cheetos, a bag of that, and um, a spicy yakisoba, and not the good like handmade yakisoba. You know, you know the yakisoba, the ramen in a, in a box. The one from the gas station. The from the gas station, the two dollar. You know, when you're hungry and you ain't got time because you got a meeting in like thirty minutes that they just fucking scheduled. Yeah, I had that. So I am paying for my crimes against humanity at the moment and creating more crimes against humanity in that toilet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brad, didn't have a, Brad did not make a good decision. No, um, I knew it wasn't great. Um, but I, I still live. I don't think I'm not going to let God take me today. <laughs> so that's where we're at with it right now. So uh, I, I, I think I'm good in 30 minute intervals. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Brad, I'm really sorry that that's happening to you. Um, but then again, you know, you bought all that stuff, you ate that stuff, and now you're yeah, paying for that. It, it's all my fault. Like yeah. I, I have no one else. To, it's like when I had uh, ice cream on Saturday. I, I mean, I, I, I bought the 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 Oreo mint ice cream, and I ate the Oreo mint ice cream, and I paid for it. It paid for and, it and I I accept that it's like when I when I bought my truck and I put larger tires on it and steel bumpers on it and it went from twenty five miles per gallon to sixty miles per gallon I own it I own that I made that choice I made my choices I was sleeping yep. I was sleeping that bed I made yep yep you sure as hell did Brett I I, um. am, I am taking all accountability there is no one to blame but myself in this life and the next. Yep, Brad. At least you understand this, right? You know, at least you're well. You're, you're what's it called man enough to say, like, "Hey, man, this is my fault. This is my fault. Ain't nobody I'll, else I'll, to blame." I'm me. gonna live with it. Like, I know, yeah. I I knew what I was getting into. I'm like, this is probably not the greatest idea, but I'm hungry, and this sounds good right now. Oh, and yeah. then I had, then I had uh, also on top of that, uh, because you know I have a sweet tooth. I had a, a Reese's cup, but it was the Reese's caramel cup one. Yeah. Which is actually fucking delicious, and um, they really need to take that off shelves. So I stopped buying those. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Well, Brad, um, I'm glad that it's it's only in 30 minutes intervals. It's not like yeah. five. No, so. so so once we get done with this, I'll go back. I'll be good. Yeah. Well, thankfully, when you're uh, when you're done with this, you don't got to do another one. So you're exactly. good. Yeah. yeah. But without further ado, Brad, let's go ahead and do this thing. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Orson Welles' Touch of Evil. Today's episode of the Nerdcore is brought to you by SeaGeek. Whether you want to see your favorite band, sports team, or comedian, SeaGeek has you covered. We're proud to be partnering with SeaGeek to offer you $10 off your first order with code the Nerdcore. That's $10 off your first order at SeaGeek.com with code T-H-E-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P-S. So take a seat at your next live event with SeaGeek. Thank you. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, Brad. Let me go ahead and read this thing here. Get to it. Touch of Evil is a 1958 American film noir written and directed by Orson Welles, who also stars in the film. The screenwriter's play was loosely based on the contemporary wait, Masterson novel Badge of Evil, 1956. The cast included Charlton, uh, Charlton Heston, Janet, Janet Leigh, Joseph Kalea, Akeem Tamaroff, and Marlene Dietrich. Yet rich. Uh, Universal International commissioned the film adaptation of the novel in 1940, April of 1956. Albert Zucksmith was, uh, was selected as producer, who then hired television writer Paul Manza to write the script. Heston was brought on board to star in January 1957 and suggested that Wells direct the project. Wells was hired to direct and star as well as rewrite the script. Filming started next month and wrapped in April. During the film's post-production, creative differences between Wells and Universal executives arose, and Wells was forced off the film. Subsequently, Universal International revised the film's editing style to be more conventional and ordered reshoots he made in November 1957. Wait, wait, wait. It, to be made, not he made. To be made, I'm sorry. To be made in November 1957. In response to the new version, Wells wrote a 58-page memo in which, he, in which he elaborately outlined his creative vision for the film and asked that his version be restored. Initially dismissed by film critics, Touch of Evil found popularity among European audiences and won top awards in 1958 Brussels World Film Festival. During the 70s, its reputation was renewed and is now widely regarded as one of Wells' best motion pictures and one of the best classic era noir films, as well as one of the last. The Touch of, Touch of Evil was re-edited According to Wells' uh, uh, original vision, uh, vision, as outlined in his memo in 1998, in 1993, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry and, at the li and by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Cinematography is done by Russell Meddy, edited by Virgil Vigil and Aaron Stell. Music is done by Henry Man Mancini. And it uh, sits at 111 minutes, which is the 1998 version. And the original theatrical version of this film is about um, an hour and 35. And I can't remember. Um, how long is the preview cut? I can't remember. So Kino Lorber has a 4K of this out, Brad. And they have uh, 4Ks for all three cuts of this. So theatrical, the uh, the restoration, or what's it called? The re re uh, reconstructed cut and the preview cut of the film. So, uh, yeah, that's it's pretty cool. cool. This is so it's kind of like Blade Runner with like. That's like five, every, bro. Chill yeah, out. Like, that's like five. Well, like he's, up to, he's up to five now. <laughs> well, like three cuts. Maybe three, four. Three, yeah. We just have three for this one. Uh, well, on it, budget, it's probably, it'd probably be more, but Orson Welles passed away. So, yeah. <laughs> On a budget of $829,000, it made $2.25 million at the box office. Pretty much success. Made, made it just back. wasn't loved by the Americans. Ah, which yeah. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Americans don't even like themselves. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Americans hate themselves. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, but Brad, um, I'll go ahead and throw it to you first since I've already seen this movie, Brad. So, um, Brad, what are your initial thoughts on Touch of People? My initial thoughts on this is this is I, I from what I've seen and we've reviewed many noirs from many great directors. Different countries too. Different countries. I mean, I absolutely love Kurosawa's vision when it comes to noirs, but I feel in from what I've seen and in, in my soul that this might be one of the best noir films I've ever watched. That's how I feel about it. I feel it's great. Um I, I mean I can get past the Charlton Heston being miscast. 
and not like he wasn't it's not he was bad in the movie it's just he's always cast as like yeah he's egyptian oh he's mexican now it's charlton heston he can you know put a little tan on him he can be whatever um so there's that but i i mean honestly orson wells is just fucking amazing in this film um i i, I liked your tweet earlier um my favorite is a fat and cranky orson wells yep. or or something to that effect and i i don't disagree i think fat and cranky orson wells works and yep. um i absolutely just i quite love this film i i was just i mean from the opening opening kind of scene where the car explodes and i'm just like this is kind of different for a 58 film like kind of unexpected Although um, I did find hilarity in just how much they uh, they thought marijuana like was capable of, like like marijuana would apparently summon a demon into your soul <laughs> and cause you to murder. That's what they all thought marijuana would do. Fifty eight. Um, instead of you just kind of sit on the couch and get the munchies but you know yeah. other than that I, I really thought this film was very well done terrific cinematography is absolutely amazing which um from the same guy who does spartacus it's not surprising um and pretty much black, not surprising yeah at all. yeah the black and white with it i think is necessary and again orson wells as a, a drunk fat cop just works um, so Brad, the theatrical version is an hour and 36 minutes. The preview is an hour and 49 minutes. And of course the reconstruction cut, which is the preferred cut. Is that, is that Orson Welles vision? The, the reconstruction, the reconstruction. Yes. That's okay. what was done. What was edited with that memo that has all the outline of what he wanted to be done. And see, I watched, which is original. an hour and 51. I yeah. watched the original just because that's what Amazon had. Yeah, well, because what because Raul's power was out for like a week, <laughs> so there was no way that you could watch the yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I could not flex, yeah, yeah, no flex. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I originally watched this in 2017 for my history of film noir class, and I gave it a two stars. We still don't know why. I have like, no we, idea what the fuck we've I was discussed on. this for five minutes on why he gave it a two yeah. stars, and I can't this e even me at my worst. I don't think would give this two stars. This is one of the best noirs I've ever seen. Um, look, I would have been okay with Char Char uh, Carl uh, Charlton Heston playing a Mexican if he didn't do the brown face. Now, like, if you're gonna play him, just like play him, like, because white Mexicans exist, guys. I, I mean, it's I was okay. just glad for no yellow tint. Yeah. Well, it's it's not possible. I'm yeah, sure that I'm sure that if what's it called uh, if it was it just later, get, it just be get like a lighter tint. You're like, oh, you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so um um, but what's it called? I have to say, uh, one of the best noirs I've seen, one of the best films I've seen. Period. Point blank. I think that this movie is incredible. Um, Charlton Heston, great as Vargas. Janet Leigh, an absolute beauty on the screen, does a great job as the as the femme fatale, and I have to tell you, Brad, it's not, you know, at face value, you don't really see her as the femme fatale, but then you have to think about it. She is the only reason that, um, that what's it called, Quinland, what's it called, gets, gets what's it called, um, um, what's it called, uh, discovered by Meneves, because he finds his cane in that room where they drugged her, so if she wouldn't have gotten drugged, we wouldn't have gotten the, the the what's called downfall of Orson Welles' character. No, we wouldn't have. So, you know, not necessarily femme fatale in the sense mm -hmm. that these film noirs bring it where she actually is the fatal woman, yeah. but she plays an incredibly important role. Without her, you do not get the downfall of Orson Welles' character. No. I, um, also, I, I mean, you know, and uh, I wouldn't say the strongest female character I've ever seen in a movie. But she's really good. She's really good. Yeah. Like, like she's no I, I, what's I, it called Rita Hayworth. Uh, no, no, she's but um, really good. And I, you know, I think she really wanted to have phone sex also. And, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and then Vargas was like, "I gotta go. Oh, There's yeah. a murder. <laughs> yeah. My pants are tight." Yeah. Yeah. But um, and then of course, Daddy Orson. In the best that I've ever seen him in his in these movies, um, my God, he is so menacing and very commanding. And 
he angry, does very, but he, he plays does very the well as a old, so well. He does well as an old fat racist. Let's just go with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, he keeps sounding like, don't talk. I don't speak Mexican. You know, don't talk Mexican. Was like, oh, dude, it doesn't go like, slaps the shit out of him. <laughs> and then I just oh, love how, how, uh, Freaking uh, Charlton Heston uh, Vargas. He's like, he's like, I know there wasn't two dynamites in there. I just knocked the fucking box over you, you idiot. <laughs> but I mean, Brad, the thing that I always remember about this movie, and the the thing that stood out to me the most, is the opening four minute one take, where the like, what a fucking take! Oh my god, what a scene, Brad. Just lays out the atmosphere of this movie and lays out like the feeling that you're gonna get throughout this thing, and it does it so freaking well. I mean, he he, this movie like just after that, you know, you're in for a really fucking good movie. Oh, so do you think this film set the tone for like future movies with like weird ass motel managers? <laughs> I'm just like I'm like I want to know about like, Psycho. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the Norman Bates. I want to know when that movie came out because that's exactly what I'm like. I'm like, is this guy going to murder her? Because he's giving me the creeps. Although he can't stay in the same room with her. So yeah, yeah. Well, every time that guy was on the phone, I was like, dude, you have fucking rapey, bro. Like you're, yeah, you're giving like, me a weird vibe, bro. No, like I don't like standing out the window, just yep. staring at. I'm like, like okay, wait, when, when, when did worry, when did yeah, I'll I was like, when did you. Psycho or, you know, when when did that Norman when did Norman Bates come onto the screen? Six because that that yeah. So I feel like that was the the this was before that and kind of gave the the well Janet the lays in that movie too. You know, it was probably like, hey, you guys, did you guys watch Such of Evil? You know how that guy is in that movie, Norman. This you should play him like that. He's <laughs> gonna be your son. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just fantastic, Brad. I like really like this movie. I. I think it's such a great noir, and I think that are you, you know. Are you, ta- are you taking that two off? No, I take that two back. Like bad, man. I, I, yeah, that two's off, bro. That two is off. No. Um, so many people no. probably looked at them and were like, "Yeah, I can't trust this guy. I can't trust." Lighting this wise, this movie is fantastically lit. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, just has, of course, the you know the the high contrast, uh, low light of any noir, but like especially the exterior scenes, just so well lit like i really like the way that he lights that um and the stuff inside just incredible as well i mean it just has a very like a very dark what's it called feeling to it and it's just incredible the way he just does this movie i I did like how they were like oh yeah we gotta go question uh everyone in the strip club so everybody let's go back to the strip club (laughs) (laughs) oh my god but um it was uh, it was very 50s it was it was i mean yeah it was really cool it, yeah. it, it, and that that's that's what I think with this noir. It, um, it's so dumb because noir to me is supposed to have that like really cool vibe to it. And yeah. this has it. Yeah. Music is good too. I really like it. Um and just I, I think it's a great movie. Uh I don't think it's perfect. Um I, I what's it called? Because maybe what's um you know, I don't know. I I, I feel like I what's it called? Uh, I feel like I've still I don't like the way that I watch this and I feel like I wasn't like I know a perfect movie when I feel it, right? And uh, I just, I don't think that this was perfect, but it's as near perfect as it can fucking get. Like this I mean, for, for noir, it's, like I said, it's up there as being one of my favorites. 100%. It's up there with some of the best Curacao on noirs. Yep. Um, and that, that's saying a lot if I'm putting it on the same um, pedestal as the Emperor. Yeah. So, just so big, great, big, da- big Daddy Orson did it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, you know, I just, I just love, Fat Orson, like I just love Fat Orson. Like, I mean, that's, Fat, to Fat me, Orson that's brings the it. Best, the best he does. I mean, um, 19, 1984 Transformers. That was Fat Orson. We yeah. know it was Fat Orson. Yeah. Now I know, like I, what's it called? I still really like uh, the flower. The uh, what's it called? The lady from Shanghai. So you know, but what's it called? I, I just still, that Irish accent just throws me out of it. That's really all. That's the only thing that really fucking throws that's me. That's the only thing that throws me out of that movie is that Irish accent. Yeah, but damn good movie brad uh definitely one of the best that i've ever seen definitely one of the best noirs i've ever seen um in that i I just i think that he's just well made i i can't believe that what's it called Uh, i i thought about this movie and he like i said on my review on norbox i can't believe i ever considered this movie anything less than a fucking masterpiece i cannot believe that i ever thought about this movie anything than that because i really think that this is great i 
and Brad, the funny thing is I watched this version. It's not the like, oh, it's because I watched the theatrical version compared to this one. I was like, no, like I watched this. You this actually cut. watched this original? This is the cut that I watched. Not original, but the, the two hour, two hour The one hour and 51. Yeah. Cause it, yeah. It, it, it's, I think it's the same one that I have here because what's it called? Uh, I, I don't think I ever watched uh, the theatrical cut. I, I need to go back and check, but like, I'm pretty sure the version that I watched was this one because, um, it's the only one that I have available to me, but um, you know. Yeah, so we'll we'll never know why Roll back in the day gave us the two out of five stars on Letterbox. Well, I don't know, Brad. I don't but know. but um, we we know past Roll made a mistake, and he has atoned for it with this. Um, depending on his score, of course. Depending on my score, right? Yeah, depending on my score. Uh, but Brad, um. I don't know what else I can say, Brad. I think this is a great movie. I think it's great. And um, I, I think... I, I, let, let me be honest, because your face when I was like, yeah, this is one of the best noirs I think I've ever seen. Your face was not giving anything, so I'm like, oh, shit. He's going he's gonna to absolutely be like, ah, eh, eh, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brad, this was, what's it called? Uh, yeah, this was modified on, was modified February uh, 18, 2018. This is the version that I watched. Okay. This was it. This is the one that I watched. I, Maybe I you just weren't. The... Th there are some movies where you watch where I think you're just not in the mood for. Sometimes, sometimes we it, didn't it, have it, this podcast. Well, we did have this podcast back then, but we didn't review this back then. So it's no. not like oh, it's like oh man, I had a long day at school and I still have to come back and watch a yeah, movie. And... There had there have been some where it's just like oh, I was not in the mood for that movie. He just wasn't yeah. feeling it. And yeah. then you come back and you're like ah, I probably should have given a higher score than I did. I need to rewatch that. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's just one of those. You just were not yeah. in the fucking mood. Did, well, if anything, if anything, this shows how important rewatches are. You know. Yeah. You should, you know, look at those two stars you guys got on Letterbox. You should probably go back and you know rewatch some of those movies to see if you actually what's it called? Uh, yeah. What's it called? Think about. I mean, like I mean, that. people, people keep throwing out there, hey, Phantom Menace, and I'm just like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Phantom gonna... Menace, the row, row. Yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm I mean, not... I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of. So I was, I think, close to my teenage years when that came out. So across I, the I, universe. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I'd rather not again. <laughs> yeah. Appaloosa. Appaloosa no, nah. yeah. I mean, I would probably watch Appaloosa again with my dad, but that's yeah. that's just because it's a western. It's like, like, look, like, like Wreck. I gave Wreck a one star, which is supposed to be like one of the greatest horror films ever made. And I didn't like it. I gave it a one star. I should probably go back and rewatch this and see if I actually do I've feel never this even way. Heard of that? It's like a, like one of the like not one of the first, but it's like one of the one of the biggest you know uh, found footage films. Oh okay. Yeah, it's all it's, like, it's, it's, kind of like a Blair Witch. You know, maybe on October I'll I'll, I'll re we'll rewatch Wreck so that way we can what's it called I can reevaluate it. So, right? so we can reevaluate, and if yeah. we want to talk shit, we can talk shit. Yeah, but like you know, stuff like X Men Origins Wolverine. I'm not, yeah, I'm not reevaluating that shit. No. Uh, Terminator, or, or, Terminator, what's it called? The Genesis Terminator no. Salvation. Yeah, no, 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 no. But um, yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> there, there are some movies they're just shit, and you guys gotta get over it. And yeah. if you love it, you know you you love what you love. But yeah. I can I can give a review if I watch the whole movie. I can give my opinion. Yeah. Point is, uh, that I'm trying to say is I'm glad I got back to this movie, and I'm glad that I really got to rewatch the movie because I think it is truly a masterpiece. And I think, as of right now, what I've seen for him because I've never seen Citizen Kane, I think that this is really Orson Welles' greatest film he's ever made, and just definitely one of the best uh, what uh, noirs I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Brad, my final verdict is a nine point twenty five out of ten. I think this movie is as near perfect as it can get. Um, I think it's a great film, and yeah, definitely one that I would rewatch, and definitely one that I would recommend people to watch because this is incredible, incredible. Brad, what is your final verdict on Touch of Evil? Um, so like I said, I think this is probably up there as one of the best noir films, and I absolutely, um, I didn't, I didn't quite love as much as you, The Lady of Shanghai, just because that fucking accent threw me out of it. Um, <laughs> I did love Falstaff. I mean, I really, and th that was not a perfect movie to say the least, but I really did <laughs> enjoy that movie for it being a Shakespearean film with yeah. a lot of old English and a lot of words I would have to look up in the dictionary. Um, I did love 
Orson in that movie, but I love Orson far more in this movie. I think Orson did the best he probably could do. I don't know. I, I mean, I know there's a lot more movies that we would probably have to go through, but I would be very surprised if I found one that is above touch of evil just because I overall just enjoyed this film. And I, I watched the, just the, the, I guess the cut from the, the studio, the, I, the I theatrical guess. cut, the theatrical cut. So if I'm saying that I, I probably need to watch the, the two hour, the one hour and 51 minute cut to see Orson's real vision. But from just the studio cut, I think it's, it's near perfect noir and one of the best I've ever seen. And, and for that, I don't know if I'll see another Orson. I don't know if I'll see a better Orson Welles film. I know we could go through a lot, but honestly, Citizen this, Kane. <laughs> there's maybe, always Citizen the, Kane. There's always Citizen Kane. Maybe I. I don't know. Um, yeah. but for that, for this, I'm giving it a ten out of ten. I mean, right. I, I think it's crazy absolutely terrific. Because, because you know, everybody who I've talked to, they say that that reconstructed cut just fixes everything that is wrong with that theatrical cut. I, I and um, it, it may. It, it may add to it for me, but I absolutely just love the look, the feel, the story, and just the characters in this film. I think that there are a lot of very memorable characters who shouldn't probably have been memorable, but are made memorable through the writing or through the acting. And I, I mean, I, I think it's just a testimony to how good of a director Orson Welles was. Yeah, sure. And, of course, that concludes our review of Touch of Evil. Thank you, as, as always, guys, for joining us. Uh, you can find us on thenerdcore.com, Twitter at the nerdcore underscore, Instagram, and threads at the nerdcore, and TikTok at the nerdcore. We thank you guys so much for joining us here, and thank you guys so much for keeping up with our socials, patreon.com slash the nerdcore. At the $1 tier, you get this episode early and ad-free before anybody else gets to watch it on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Time. Of course, we have a Discord link in the description so you can discuss these movies with us and chat with us on Discord. We're pretty active there. I'm pretty active there as well. So if you guys want to chat, I'm in there talking with you guys. Uh, of course, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you don't miss another Orson Welles review on this channel. And of course, if you're listening to this on the audio side of things, leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast app of choice and follow us on that app as well. Thank you, guys. Please. Oh, that helps us out so much. And let's continue the streak of hopefully getting uh, double digits on every single review that we drop. So thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys do that. Um, Brad, we want to thank our patrons. Without them, it is not possible. Without them, none of this gets made. And they are wonderful people, especially our producer, Shane. Where can they find him, Brad? I'll roll again for the second time today and for many more because we have to give a shout out to Shane. Our friend Shane, you can follow at twitch.tv slash XSRK or on Twitter at thrifted.il or go buy something from the sub you got at prisoncityvintage.com. Fuck yeah. Thank you, Shane, for being the amazing person that you are and helping us here. We couldn't do this without you. Sh Shane deserves all the success for his hard work. Yeah. So. And I'm glad that we get to be a part, like, what's it called? A, one of the things that he spends on that success. That he, he, he probably doesn't remember it still. It's probably just an automatic thing. No, but... he knows that he he knows okay. that he has, that he still subscribed to this. He says okay. he just, like, dips his, he leaves his money and dips. He goes, that's just all I got. It goes, Appreciate it, Shane. He goes, like, I ain't got time to interact, and he ain't got time to do all this stuff. Yeah, I, get, I get that. Was, maybe maybe yeah. one day we'll have him have him back. And yeah. um, look forward to the Julia, Julia episodes. Uh, yeah. In future, in the fall, August, because um, guys, if you didn't know, we're gonna take over Brazil. Yeah, yeah. like, but like we haven't got quite a foothold in America yet, but we will take over Brazil. <laughs> oh my god! But guys, um, we are not done with Orson Welles month yet. Next week we have one more review, and of course our mini pod. So mini go pod. ahead and check all of that out. But for now, that's all we've got for you guys, and of course we'll catch you guys later. Uh, make sure you guys uh, let's go join us at the five dollar tier for our True Detective season one episode seven watch along, and then of course throughout the week we have more more reviews coming out. Uh, I wanted to celebrate uh, Con happening this month, and I chose a um, a Palm, Palm d'Or win, winner this month. So we're doing a review of four months, uh, three weeks, and two days with um, 
uh, for Saturday's review. So go ahead and check check that out when that drops. And, of course, we have our X-Men 97 review. So a lot of cool stuff going on this week. So check all that stuff out. But for now, Brad, let's go ahead and send them out of here. All right, Rowan. Thank you for being host as always. Uh, thank you to all those who join us in future chats because you can't join in this chat because it's a recording. So I guess you can join when it drops. May I? I don't. I don't know how YouTube works. Um, but thank you all. Thank you to all the listeners out there, all our Patreon supporters. We appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, to end this episode, um, don't let the the Mary Jane choke you out. Young Yoda out. Thank <laughs> you.